We're on lesson 2 of chapter 11, which we're going to solve multi-step equations. First, we're going to combine like terms to solve equations. Then we're going to use distributed property to solve equations. Then we'll solve a real-world problem. Here's an equation that would require a couple steps. Taylor joined a fitness center. Her first month, she paid double. And the second month, she paid the regular rate. She paid $90 total for the first two months. What is the regular rate of membership? So we see that it totals up to $90, so it needs to equal 90. That's the payment for the first two months here. And we need to solve for the regular rate of membership, so a monthly rate, right? So that becomes our variable, and we'll make that M for month. We see for the first month, she paid double, meaning that whatever the monthly rate is, she paid twice that, so 2 times M. The second month she paid the regular, so we would add just a regular monthly rate, and that would equal $90. So we'd actually be able to solve this here, and we'd have to simplify this first, right? We have 2m plus 1m, 2 plus 1 would be 3m. So 3 months rate equals $90. To find 1 month, we could divide both sides by 3, so 1 month would equal $30. So here it tells us to solve for the variables. We have 7n minus 1 minus 2n equaling 14. So here we have a 7n and minus 2n. Well, we could simplify this to solve it. So we have 7n here, and this is important. You need to take the sign before each number because if it's minus 2n, we gotta treat it like a negative. So we have 7n minus 2n, that's gonna give us 5n. We still have this minus 1 here, equaling 14. So to get 5n by itself, we could add 1 to both sides. So negative 1 plus 1 equals 0, so these cancel each other out. 14 plus 1 is 15, so that leaves me with 5n equaling 15. And to get n by itself, I could divide this by 5, giving me 1n. And since I did that over here, I have to do that over here. So n would equal 3. So now I have negative x minus 11 plus 17x equaling 53. So I keep a, see a couple different variable values here. I see a positive 17x and a negative x. So we're going to circle with the sign in front just so we know what we're dealing with here. So we have negative 1x because this is a 1 plus 17x means the positives win by 16. So 16x is our value. We keep this minus 11 here, and that equals 53. So to get 16x by itself, we can add 11 to turn this into 0. Negative 11 and positive 11 would cancel each other out. Then we get add 11 over here, and that gives us 16x crossing out, equaling 64. To get x by itself, we could divide 16 to turn that into 1 and divide this by 16. So that gives us x equals 64 divided by 16, which equals 4. Now we can use distributed property to solve for equations. So we have 3 times z minus 1 plus 8 equaling 14. So when we use distributed property, we have to distribute the number outside the parentheses. So we have to multiply 3 times z and the 3 times the 1. So as you multiply, 3 times z is 3z. Always bring down the sign. So if it's a minus sign, we have to bring that minus down. So 3 times 1 is 3. So we're done with that. So we can add the 8 now. And that equals 14. Well, if we're going to simplify, we can't simplify anything over here. But we can simplify the negative 3 and the positive 8. Remember, always take the sign before the number. So negative 3 and positive 8 equals positive 5. So 3z plus 5, this is positive 5, equals 14. To get 3z by itself, we can subtract 5 to turn that into 0. So 3z equals 14 minus 5, which is 9. To find what 1z would equal, we can divide by 3, do that to both sides. So z equals 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Here we have 33 equals 4 times k minus 3 plus 1. So let's use that distributive property again. Distribute that 4. So 33 
equals 4 times k, which is 4k. Drop that minus sign here, so that goes down here. And then 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 1. So we can simplify this here. We have a negative 12, remember to take that sign before, plus 1, a positive 1. Negative 12 and positive 1 would be negative 11. So 33 equals 4k, and since it's negative 11, we say minus 11. To get rid of this minus 11, we could add a positive 11, and these would cancel each other out. Let's do that to both sides. So 33 plus 11 is 44, equaling 4k. Well, I want to find out what 1k equals, so we can divide 4 by 4 to get 1, and divide by 4 here. So that gives me 44 divided by 4, which is 11, and that equals 1k. So k equals 11. Now we can solve a real-world problem. It says Jamal owns twice as many graphic novels as Levi owns. Adding 6 to the number of graphic novels Jamal owns and then dividing by 7 gives the number Brooke owns. Brooke owns 30 graphic novels. How many does Levi own? So we need to solve for this. How many does Levi own? So let's use an L for Levi. L is our variable because we have to solve for it. So let's use clues to help us write this equation. It says Jamal owns twice as many graphic novels as Levi owns. So if we're going to write a value for Jamal, this would be L for Levi. Twice as many would be 2 times L, so 2L. So this is Jamal, 2L. It says adding 6 to the number of graphic novels Jamal owns, so 2L plus 6. And then dividing by 7, so we'd have to divide all of this by 7, gives a number that Brooke owns. So that means it's going to equal Brooke. Well, what does Brooke have? Brooke owns 30. So that means this is going to equal 30. So here is our multi-step equation. 2L, 2 times Levi's, which is Jamal's, plus 6 divided by 7 equals Brooke's, which is 30. Well, first we have to get this 2L plus 6 by itself because it's all being divided by 7. And we found out before from a previous lesson that when we multiply times 7, the dividing by 7, then multiplying times 7, would leave just 2L plus 6 because you're doing the exact opposite to each other. So if we multiply it by 7 on both sides, these would cancel out, leaving us with just 2L plus 6 equaling 30 times 7, which is 210. So 2L plus 6 equals 210. If we want to get the 2L by itself, we can subtract by 6. And that gives us 204. So 2L equals 204. So twice of Levi's. So this actually would be what Jamal owns, right? This is twice as much as Levi. So Jamal owns 204. Well, how much does Levi own? We can divide by 2 to find 1 Levi. So this would just leave us with L for Levi, equaling 204 divided by 2. That's going to be 102. So Levi owns 102 novels. We'll write it like that, 102 novels.